Welcome to Gaming Commentary. I'm your host, Jim Leonard, on the Old School PC. And this is just going to be an informal commentary of what it is like to play and win Defender of the Crown for the PC. Uh, this is just me speaking along with a gameplay that I had already previously recorded. In fact, if you knew me from the other channel that I maintain, uh, this video is probably going to seem very familiar. What we're looking at now is Defender of the Crown being played uh, in an emulator. I apologize. Normally I try to record things from the real hardware. Uh, played in an emulator, and this is actually the very special uh, three-voice sound, 16-color version of Defender of the Crown for the PC. Uh, you may know the original version as being on the Amiga and looking and sounding better than this. However, this version is not too shabby. Uh, it was a later version of Defender of the Crown created for the European market. It has a, it's a bootable disc instead of a DOS readable disc, and it actually comes on two discs. Um, and in fact, it should be prompting us for the second disc uh, right now. Yep, there it is. So uh, what I like to do is play the shock and awe strategy, and you'll notice here that I'm moving around and picking, uh, looking at all of them, but I end up picking Jeffrey Longsword because his sword play is strong. That comes into the shock and awe version of the gameplay where uh, Jeffrey Longsword can essentially win any sword play fight. So here's the introduction, of course, with uh, Robin Hood explaining things, and it's not terribly important, which is why I won't comment on it. You can call on Robin three times in the game to try to help, but uh, let's save that for later. So we start the game. Now, you you start in one of the random three uh, territories up top, and the particular gameplay that I like to do, which is sort of this all-or-nothing gameplay, is to immediately take all of your army and immediately start trying to grab as, do a giant land grab, grab as much land as you can. You'll see I moved down and I grabbed... Uh, the land right below me. Now there are two pieces of land that have uh, eight income, eight gold pieces income per month, and those are the ones you want to grab as quickly as possible. And in fact, here I am grabbing more army, and there's the one. There's the middle one right there where I just landed, and that one has quite a lot of gold. And if you can grab that now, okay. Now see, because it has a lot of gold, uh, the other people are going to try to grab it as well. And that is, in fact, what that other person did. But since I grabbed my entire army and put them into my traveling party, I'm pretty good at defending myself. So I should win this battle. And I did. Now, here's another fun part. When it's my turn, I'm probably, if I remember correctly, I'm going to go to uh, try to get the bottom rightmost piece of land. And you can actually transfer through a tiny pixel bridge. Watch this. Boom, look at that. I, I, it doesn't look like you can immediately go to that territory, but I just did. It's, I don't know if it's a bug in the game or if it's intentional, but there is one pixel bridging those territories, and you can go ahead and cross it. And then I'm going to make another rush uh, for the land right at the bottom right corner, which also has eight gold per month. And I've got it. Now, a couple of rounds of this, and generally you'll, the game, you'll either be in a great position for winning, look at all that treasure I have, up to 62, or the game will be over because someone will have attacked your home castle and you have nobody in it. Now, now is a great time to stock up and buy uh, castles to try to defend your territory, which I just did. Uh, and you'll notice I'm defending, I'm trying to defend the two, the areas of land that give me the most gold, which is why I put those two castles there. And then you just spend the rest of the home army. And now it's a waiting game, uh, at least with this particular style of gameplay. I am now going to. Okay, so someone is attacking the castle I just put down. So when you put down a castle, uh, you get it's harder to uh, get access to the to your soldiers. It also gives you, I want to say, eight soldiers right off the bat. So you're buying soldiers and a castle when you put that down. And I don't recall if I won this battle, but it doesn't look very good because they outnumber me two to one, and they have a catapult, which means they can use some of the alternative fight strategies, um, in particular Bombard. I'll, I'll get to that in a future section of video, and there's a very long version of the fighting scene here. Uh, I'll go ahead and spend the time to explain all of those uh, fighting things. All right, so that's not great, but I did get the gold that I needed from that. I still have the lower right-hand corner. There's a completely empty territory above me, and I might just go ahead and try to grab that, because there's going to be no opposition. Yep, there it is. And I might get attacked. Yep, got attacked because I'm getting a little too close. 
to uh, to the enemy. But because I have a lot of soldiers, that was easy. Now at this point, oh, I'm getting attacked again. And is that where my army currently is? It is. So I still have the same 34 soldiers. And they only came at me with five. Nice try, bro. So, at this point, what I usually try to do is wander around and just kind of hold on to those. And then keep saving the gold. And then hoarding the gold. And then buying soldiers with it. And then, once I have an army of something ludicrous, like 150 or 200 soldiers, then I just smash every single thing in front of me. And there are a couple of strategies that can make the smashing a little bit easier. Pretty boring fight here, nothing to say. So drawbacks with this strategy is that if you grab your whole army and move away from your home and then someone attacks your home, then you're done. But an advantage is that if you are hoarding and buying home army and hoarding and buying home army, etc., when someone, before you move out, if someone attacks your home castle, you've got a ludicrous garrison in your home castle. And it looks like, yeah, what I'm doing right here is I'm heading back home and I'm probably going to be picking up soldiers and... No, actually, I'm just going to hang out. I'm going to hang out by, by a catapult. It's not... Okay, so at this point in the game, I decided it was time to start smashing some castles. And, of course, buying soldiers. So this game is running a little bit faster in the emulator than it runs in real life uh, on a real system, let's say a, a 4 uh, or an 8 megahertz system. That's actually kind of good because the game wasn't programmed terribly well. There are speed-sensitive parts to the game, but uh, they're useless. Like, the jousting is nearly useless in this, in this game. It might be much better on the Amiga or other platforms, but it's terrible here. So... Let's see, so I bought a catapult and I'm now transferring to my campaign. I'm probably going to go out and start smashing a couple of people. Uh, I am completely surrounded, I'm surrounded on one side by a friendly uh, enemy, the light blue. I'm about to be attacked, my home castle. If your home castle is attacked and you lose, then the game's over. So you need to have some space around your castle. So I decide, okay, so they're attacking me. Everything's even except for the number of soldiers, of course, and, and which is why this is going to be over right now, yes. So what I was saying is the game wasn't programmed very well, and it doesn't update the screen very well, very quickly. It updates the entire screen, even if only those tiny little numbers are changing. So playing it on a slightly faster system is okay. Uh, the only parts that are going to cause you real trouble are going to be the catapult, and maybe you could slow it down just for those sections and the jousting and no, nobody cares about the jousting in there. Alright, I'm trying to take back my favorite territory. It's my favorite one. Um, it's easy to grab and gives you the most amount of gold per month. So, catapult. This is the fun part. The bottom of the catapult... So, the way to do this is that you have to knock a hole... Okay, I screwed up there and I forgot to hit the button. So you hit the button, you hit it again. It's kind of like playing a golf game. A golf game on PC. Boy, I'm really not getting the hang of this. This must, this must have been the first time I played it in the emulator, and I'm not used to the speed. You hit it, then you hit it again. Okay, this is also still too high, so this is going to be a complete waste, but I assure you, <laughs> later in the campaign, uh, I do hit it. Okay, in fact, here I got it right. So you want to knock from the top down, okay? So you can't just smash something in the, in the, in the wall. You have to knock down the top, and then knock it down a little bit more, and then knock it down a little bit more, etc., etc. The next time we get to a catapult scene, I will tell you the secret to always doing uh, catapulting correctly on this platform. Wow, only two soldiers? Jeez. So, that reminds me. The enemy in the lower left, I forget his name, um, he is also somewhat good at jousting, and what he likes to do, you'll notice in this my philosophy here, look at all this treasure I've gained, I'm up to 77. Now, if I were me, and I am, I would buy, I would spend it all and buy home army. See, the thing is, you get nervous uh, hoarding all that gold, because someone else can raid your castle and take it. You can raid their castle and try to take it back, but generally, it's like half and half. Like, if they steal 100 from you, I mean, if you have 100, they steal 50. And then you can go to raid them, but of the 50 they stole, you'll only be able to take back 25. Like, you can only you can only raid for half of their total gold. So, uh-oh, home castle. Now, isn't it a good thing that I, that I built up my home army before 
that I've spent some gold on the home army. So this is why I can totally defend myself, although that enemy AI is kind of stupid for trying to come at me with four soldiers. So look at this. I get almost I get almost 30 gold every round. It's real easy to build up a home army this way. And there, in fact, you know, as long as nobody attacks you, um, you can do this. Now, I'm going... I have so many soldiers, in fact, that I'm actually positioning some in the castle here because the guy in the lower left really likes to try to take that territory. So now I'm going home here. Okay, and I guess I'm just trying to ward this guy off of me. And it's easy because he didn't even have any men there. This is a great allocation, all these territories. If all I can do is just keep the territories here that I have, uh, this is going to be over very... it's going to be a, an easy game. Now, in actuality, this total length of video is at one hour. And so something must have gone wrong or something must have gone sideways. I did win this game. Not only did I win this game, but I got a Maiden. So you get to see what that looks like on the PC. Uh, specifically on the PC on the 16 color Tandy version with this cute three voice sound in the background. By the way, if you're not playing this on a Tandy, you're not playing the Tandy version, I highly recommend that you turn the music off. It will quickly drive you insane. I'm sure they did the best with what they had at the time, but uh, boy, it's uh, really grating after a while. There's only like five or six tunes in the whole game, and, and when you hear them, they're short and they loop, so you hear them all the time and they drive you nuts. So I'm really surprised I won that, actually, because they had a knight and a catapult. But again, might makes right. I must have had more, way more, uh, way more men. Okay, going to clearly lose this. And because they are attacking me, I don't have the retreat option. So I essentially just have to sit here and wait to die. Wow, I'm amazed I took out two of them. That should not have happened. Three, wow. Must be Schwarzenegger and... And Stallone with that castle. All right, so I lost the castle anyway. But not to worry. I've got 54 treasure, and I am probably going to go home, buy some home army. Okay, so I put one soldier in there just to give whoever comes at me a tiny fight. So you'll, that's why I'm putting only one person in each territory. It's not a great strategy, but it's better than them just than they're just handing it to them. Okay, so 20 per castle. That's generally what I do. I should probably put more per castle, but. 20 is enough to, to, give a, a, to give a good defense to an enemy. So this is me redistributing my men all over the territories, just putting one in there. And then here we go, putting castles down, probably on either side of me. Yeah, just so I can have a, a... just so it's not so easy for people to get at me. And then the rest on home army. Once the home army soldiers hits 150 or 200, I usually just start smashing. Okay, yeah, the guy at the top, Wolfric the Wild, he loves to do these... The, the tests of chivalry, which is essentially just jousting. And uh, the problem with jousting is that uh, on the PC it's really half-baked um, and it's just incredibly difficult. So don't ever wage land, don't ever try, even if you pick one of the people who's good at jousting, you it's very granular here and it's really t almost total random chance whether or not you get it right in the center X. Now, I did happen to do that there. All this talk about how jousting is terrible, and I actually managed to do it. But always just joust for fame. Don't ever do land. Okay, I'm going to go right for... Oh, that's, I'm curious. I thought I would have done Wolfric. I, I try to get the hard guys out of the way early just so I can end... Or get killed by the hard guys early just so I can end this thing. All right, let's see what happens. So, with the keyboard, I usually move over to the left side. Now, see, look at that. It's, there's almost nothing I could do, and it's way off the X, and yep, I'm gone. Now, one of the things I was saying uh, just before I got dismounted here was that uh, I move over seven times. So what that means is with the keyboard in a jousting section, I hit the left arrow key seven times, and then that puts you in line up and down with where the shield X is going to be. Um, but it's still impossible to hit, so just... Don't even try. Just have fun with those, but don't wager any land on them. So normally when I would play a shock and awe campaign, uh, I would play much more recklessly and just accept the fact that while I'm out campaigning with all my soldiers, my home base could get attacked and the game could be over immediately. 
uh, those le- those usually result in very short games, like 20 minutes long, 15 or 20 minutes long, with either you the victor or them the victor. In this particular gameplay, I guess because I knew I was making a video, um, I'm playing it a little safer in that uh, I've put up castles on either side of my home base, my home castle, and I've made sure that they each have 20 people apiece. And that way, um, if someone, like right now, if someone's trying to attack, trying to get close to my home castle to completely end me, um, there are castles in the way. Now here it said the castle strength was 15%. That means they did decimate the castle. That The castle is providing hardly any protection. But it is providing 15% protection, which means that even though, uh, you know, you could you could be attacked by two or three or four more soldiers than you have in the castle but if the castle strength is still up that's like a that's like a shield bonus and you may still win the fight now here it doesn't look like i'm gonna win uh because they outnumber me two to one and they have a catapult so so much for that but uh if you get attacked and it says your castle strength is like 40 percent, that means it's providing quite a lot of shield and so you may win even if you don't have enough uh soldiers Trying to remember what I'm doing here. I don't. I'm not powerful enough to take a castle yet. So I think I'm just trying to take back as many territories as possible. The less territories the enemy has, of course, the less gold they earn, and so they may start lashing out and trying to raid castles um, to get some gold. But uh, for the most part, this is me just trying to earn as much money as possible, so that when the time comes to eventually attack, it's kind of ridiculous. There are probably better ways to play this game, strategy-wise, and I think I'm trying to be... Uh oh he took my favorite territory there. I'm going to have to get that back. And now we have an event, and occasionally events... So this event was bad, in which uh, Normans plotted against me and I lost a territory, although luckily for me, I'm right above it, so all I have to do is leave a guy behind to hold the territory and then go take it right back. Didn't even have to bombard the castle or anything. So with 50 guys at home, I'm probably getting nervous here, and I just want to buy some more people. Or a castle, which also has the effect of buying some more people. It deposits them directly in the castle. And then empty the rest of it into home army. And once home army gets something huge, like 180 or 200, that's typically when I, when I go back home, grab just about all of them, and then just start smashing my way through anything in my way. So I'm currently in one of my other favorite two territories, again, the only two territories that give you eight gold per month. And uh, looks like he damaged too much of the castle I was sitting in. So I'm probably, I mean, it's even, but he's got three knights, although knights don't help ter too much when you're in a castle. And nope, almost. I'm now trapped in my little tiny territory. I may try to make a run for it, which would... Ah, no. Okay, so now it is time to rescue someone. So, this is why I picked Jeffrey Longsword. It's impossible to lose if you pick Longsword. You'll notice uh, the U health bar, that's Jeffrey Longsword, is fairly high. And the enemies is not. Now, it looks if it, this looks like some amazing strategy, it isn't. Uh, I'm playing with the keyboard, and all I'm doing here is holding down the enter key and letting keyboard repeat work its magic. Um, and when you do that, when you're just spamming the enter key, uh, you end up hitting them. They try to block and waste time, and you get an extra hit in. So for every hit they put on you, you put two hits on them, and so you always win. So now I get to rescue the Saxon Maid. And what the Saxon Maid does is it gives you a bonus in leadership. So whatever my leadership was before this, we could probably go back, you know, five minutes or so in the video and take a look at what leadership is. Now that you have a Saxon maid alongside you, uh, your leadership skill is bumped up to the next level. That doesn't mean it can't get back down. It can, but it's like a bonus. It's a, it's a one-time bonus to your leadership level. And this is also just a very nice sequence, too. Uh, I remember playing 
the Amiga version and getting to this point uh, shortly before I decided... I, playing the Amiga version and seeing some of these utterly amazing graphics, uh, not just the maid, but the um, trumpeters at the, at the jousting section. I mean, just the Jim Sachs's art was just so incredible that I decided I wanted to play this uh, on my own home machine. Now, of course, imagine my horror when I... <laughs> got home to an IBM CGA system and saw the horrible colors, but at least the art was good. Oh, and by the way, okay, so I take that back. It's When you get the maid, not only is it a leadership bonus, but you also inherit all their territories. Now, someone is foolishly trying to attack my home castle, and they probably do not know that I have over 100 soldiers there. This is going to be over extremely quickly. So I lost no guys and took out seven of theirs. And then I lost one guy and took out all their rest. So the game weighs soldiers very, very heavily uh, compared to the other types. So that's what you want to build up. I may just wait it out here. I would have liked that second territory, but it's currently light blue. The, my, you know, the, the one that's slightly lower and to the left of the centermost territory. That's my other favorite one to have. It looks like I'm going to try to fight my way out of my position here. Um, I'd like to have it, but uh, it's currently in possession by a friendly person, and if I attack to try to get it back, uh, I'll start warring with them. All right, so did I get the top one? I did. So here's what you do if you want to have a successful catapult. You look at the bottom edge of the, of the catapult scoop which is brown in this video. And that's, you see the line of pixels that make up the very bottom of that sprite, for lack of a better term. Also notice, at the bot towards the bottom of the edge of the catapult, you'll see three horizontal lines, each a pixel spaced apart from each other. Or rather, I guess every two pixels. You can use those horizontal lines as a lineup mechanism for the scoop. Now, the next time we catapult, I'll try to document it a little closer, but... Uh, you can use those to determine how far back you should pull the catapult. So with all these territories, what are we going to do now? Well, the video is 53 minutes long and we're only at minute 22. So probably not going to win the game immediately, but this is probably more of building up the home army and then just probably systematically taking everybody out one by one. I'm in a very strong position here. The three enemies are have one or two territories each. It's actually more of a concern for me right now that it's sometimes the people who are friendly to you, the light blue in this map, they can turn on you. They can attack you. If you're doing too well too quickly, that's another uh, that's another problem with the shock and awe uh, philosophy here is that if you if you amass too much too quickly and you're too successful too quickly, the game will up the difficulty by having your friends attack you, and they become enemies now. Alright, so this is why it's important to occasionally dump your gold back into your home. So, wow, 15% in 28 minutes. So they, that was quite a lot. But look, I had like 170 or something. So even though they took out 25 men and decimated my castle, I still quite easily defend myself here. Aha! Now that the lower left enemy took it from my friend, I can now take it from the lower left enemy. And I'm probably going to start heading right there to do it. Oh, no. Okay, I'm going to take out the castle and destroy this enemy. Assuming I managed to catapult correctly. So, let's watch this again. You start with a boulder and you go to the middle of the three horizontal lines with the bottom edge of the scoop. I missed there, but if I, I this time I was successful and I managed to take out the top. Now, if your very next thing is disease, and you're confident, if you're confident you're catapulting, make the very next thing disease, and then shoot it through the same hole that you made. Don't crank it any more or any less. Crank it exactly the same way as when you made the original hole. That is because disease takes out more men the sooner you use it, and the idea behind that is that. You know, the longer the disease is in the castle, the more people it kills. Um, although, 
you don't actually see that happening in the gameplay. What happens is it just makes the calculations, and then it just immediately takes those people out. Which is not really fair, because then you could also start throwing f the firebombs at them and taking out even more people. And as tempting as that may be, it's almost always better to knock down the castle as much as possible. Because you could firebomb a lot of people, but if the castle strength is still 50% or something, it'll be very hard to actually take them out in real combat. So I lost that. So when you lose uh, something that you initiated, your campaign snaps back to your home castle. And that can actually be useful. I've done that on purpose sometimes to get to my home castle uh, without, you know, without wasting time trying to navigate friendly territories or whatever. It's, it's, a, it's a nice side benefit of the mechanics. All right. So you can raid other castles and steal their gold, but they can raid you. So this is me getting nervous and dumping my money before I before some other guy raids me uh, into soldiers. And I have a feeling once I hit 200, I'm probably gonna head on out here and just try to kill everybody. So while we wait for this incredibly slow screen updating to allow me to build up my campaign, uh, maybe now is a good time to talk about knights and catapults, as long as we're seeing them there. Uh, knights in the manual are described as having the battlefield efficiency of, I want to say it's either five soldiers or eight soldiers, but they don't really behave that way. Um, I, at least in my experience. I, I haven't delved too much into the game code to see exactly how knights are used, but it's almost, in, in this game, soldiers are, you know, they've, they're a unit of one, and knights are a unit of unknown. Okay, so here we go. You'll notice I pulled the scoop down to the center, to the middle of the of the three horizontal lines. Now I'm going to do it to the top horizontal line. No, no, I'm sorry. I did it to the middle one again to throw the disease. Now the boulder, which is now, okay, that one I missed. And it went right through the same hole, but I'm going to do it to the the line above it. Okay, good. And now since there are no lines for you to refer to, you just have to stare at the screen intently and count upward by two. And I missed that one, so I didn't do it right. Okay, that one I believe I did correctly. Yep, so I bashed another hole. So when I played this way 30 years ago, in front of a CRT screen, uh, to ensure that I would catapult correctly, I would move my eyes three inches away from the screen. I would put my eyes right up on the screen and stare at the line that I needed to release it by. And as soon as I saw the catapult scoop enter and hit that line, I would hit the enter key. And I looked like a fool doing it, but uh, I had perfect catapult attacks. So they have six knights. I don't remember how this... Okay, so I'm switching to bombard. So... Again, if you have a catapult, you can use Bombard, and it should, supposedly, take out more soldiers per round. If you choose Bombard and you do not have a catapult, it backfires and you start losing soldiers, I think. So that's Bombard, and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and I will comment on the others when we get to another large fighting section. So, one enemy gone. And, of course, when you take out an enemy, you get his territories. Ooh, now... See, this is the problem with the shock and awe philosophy here. Here I was, out smashing people, and someone took the opportunity to attack my home castle. Luckily, they are... they have hardly anything, and I have a lot. So Jeffrey Longsword, bear, his leadership really only ever gets to good. So what is leadership? You may have noticed those things. There was jousting, sword play, and leadership. So leadership is is how effective your soldiers are on the battle, on the battlefield, and how effective when you switch to things like outflank. If outflank war is so you, okay, maybe now's a good time to talk about all of those battle options. 
Oh, yeah, especially since we're going to do yet more jousting, which is yet more useless. Okay, so when you start a battle on the battlefield, it starts with stand and fight. And that is just your standard standing and fighting, holding your ground. If your if the character you picked has a high leadership value, like good or excellent, uh, actually I don't think good does much, but if you if it has a high leadership value, then there is another option there which is outflank, and outflank is essentially just fighting better with your soldiers, and if you have a high leadership value, outflank actually does something. If you have a leadership of good or lower, it doesn't do much, and if it's really low, then it actually, again, backfires, and... Okay, now this is me. Am I raiding now? So I chose to raid. So you're going to see the same sword play as we did when we were uh, rescuing the Maiden. However, the enemy starts out with even less health. So this really won't be any trouble at all. And again, this is the magic of keyboard repeat doing all of the fighting for you. <laughs> It's funny, you play this on the Amiga and they're like, you know, this button to parry and this button to thrust and you can move backward and forward and yeah, no. Just, uh, if you want to win, pick Longsword. Now again, the problem with Longsword is that his leadership is not very good and it never gets very high. So you can never use Outflank if you need a small boost on the battlefield. But if you overuse, so I compensate for that by getting a bazillion soldiers. Look at all that treasure. Why don't we pour that into soldiers? Oh, looks like I bought a knight. I usually don't buy knights. Um, oh, and it looks like I'm just going to put castles everywhere that I have a territory to prevent. So you'll notice when I moved upwards there and I put the castle above me, there was this lake that I went through. That isn't a lake. I know it's colored like one. It's actually Sherwood Forest. And you can request... Oh, someone's getting bold attacking my own castle. Ooh, wow, they attacked it good. Castle strength is almost gone, and they took out half the soldiers in there. Jeez. Well. Boy, I'm just getting pummeled here. Haters gonna hate. So, Sherwood Forest is where Robin lives, and you can request Robin's help uh, up to three times in the game. And what you do, and you can request his help by either selecting Sherwood Forest before selecting your next territory to attack, or you can just simply see Robin right before you attack. You may have seen that in the menus. In fact, it'll probably pop up. See Conquest? Yeah, it was there briefly. See Robin. Uh, so what happens when you see Robin Hood? Uh, what happens is that Robin Hood gives you a temporary either boost, it gives you a boost to your soldiers, uh, he also uh, gives a small negative boost to the number of people in the enemy castle. So it'll be like negative 20 to 25 people in the castle and plus 20 to 25 or 30 in your, uh, in your attacking campaign. And they're only there for that one fight. They do not stick around. So if you're going to see Robin, you need to do it right before you attack because you only get those extra people for one round. So here we are doing a good job of whittling down the castle. Now if you if you get it if you get it perfect, if you get okay, now if I make this next one it'll be perfect. If you get it Oh no, I must have I must have wasted one on disease or something. You have 6 boulders. Uh, and the castle can be knocked down five notches. If you manage to do it correctly and knock down what would be a potential sixth hole in the wall, it displays an image of a catapult as a trophy, like you have you just did a perfect catapult session. Okay, so now, and see, this is what I was talking about. Now you get a nice event where you actually gained three knights. Once I have 200 soldiers and I'm smashing people like the Hulk, it's not going to matter that I have three knights, but it's nice that I got them all the same. So, it looks like this is the beginning of the end. Uh, even though we're 20 minutes away from the end of this video, uh, I have a friendly person and the enemy only has, what is this, five territories plus their home castle, and I am making bank like you would not believe...
which is why I'm able to buy all these soldiers immediately. So it's very possible that this is the very beginning of completely overwhelming the enemy. And I could probably try to get right there in two moves, but because there's 19 minutes left to the video, I probably whittle him down one by one. Probably just to be, I don't know, sadistic. <laughs> wow, dead before I even got there. Or dead ere right as I arrived. That's no good. So, my friend is still my friend, and his territories are light blue. And it is possible he'll attack me at some point. Again, if I get too good in the game, they he just the, the, your friends turn on you. But as long as they're still your friends, oh, now see that's it. He just attacked me. All right, so my friend is no longer my friend. No, oh, sorry, friend. Sorry, I have to completely destroy you in one round. Bam. Well, he's no longer my friend. But when he was, you have the advantage of passing through their territories. So that's a that's a nice advantage the game gives you in the beginning. Uh, when you go into a friend a friend uh, lord's territory, you get the option of uh, passing through it safely or attacking it if you want to be a, a dick and try to attack them while they're still your friend. All right, so this is now me probably going to take out the guy who just attacked me, my quote unquote former friend. Notice the different graphics for when you attack a friend. They're kind of nice. They're all nice. All of these these conversions are wonderful. I believe that they were done by Kurt. Oh, how do I pronounce that? Tamanian, I believe. And uh, I remember his wonderful graphics, uh, either original or conversions. But I think they were original for uh, Wasteland for the PC. Those were also some absolutely wonderful. Graphics. He was, I consider him a, a really excellent beginning pixel artist. So he had to take the 320 by 240 by 32 color graphics on the Amiga version made by Jim Sachs and convert them down to 320 200 by hand on the PC. And uh, I think he did a really fantastic job. Okay, so I've now smashed my former friend. Now it's just me and him. And because I completely have the upper hand here. Uh, yeah, this is probably going to be a few rounds here of earning money, stocking up on soldiers, earning money, stocking up on soldiers, and waiting for him to make the first move. And then as soon as he makes the first move, I'm probably just going to end it and just start taking out all of his things one by one, b uh, driving him back to his home castle, and then finally destroying the home castle. So I've already won the game at this point. I mean, not, you know, not you, not really won it, but I mean, if you just look at it, it's a lot of men he took out for, uh, for only 45%. Um, I mean, effectively, I would consider this game already won. I have more than half the board. I have probably way more soldiers than he does. But what the heck, I... Might as well just play it out to the end. And then you get to see the nice ending screens as well. So again, boulder first. Wait for the, the bottom edge of the scoop to hit that middle line in the catapult. And then disease in the exact same way. Oh no, wait, was this... Bo okay, boulders. No, I guess it looks like we're going to try to use this as practice to see if we can get a perfect catapult score. So there's three. Now again, since there's no line to, to do it to, you kind of have to look at the surrounding pixels and count up by two. You have to imagine that there's lines there. Okay, that's a good throw. All right, now if I get this one correct, up two more than the previous, then we get the little... Nope, I must have missed it. You get this perfect little, perfect catapult symbol. You know, it's funny. I wonder if the Tandy version doesn't have that. I definitely remember seeing this in the CGA version. Okay, T probably time to buy some home army. Otherwise, he's going to raid the home castle. We're going to lose all that gold. Oh, sure, what the heck. I've got so much money, I might as well waste it on some castles. 
he's never going to get up here, but what the hey. I guess maybe I was subconsciously trying to make the game a little bit more challenging for myself, but whatever. I actually uh, wrote a small... You see how slow this transferring is. That's because the screen updates are so slow that I mentioned before. Um, I actually wrote a small program to speed up the system timer uh, by twice, by a factor of two. So the time counts. So in DOS, the time counts. Whoa! All right, we know where his... Okay, we know where his enemy campaign is, and it's right outside my front door. All his soldiers are in a campaign that just took the territory right outside my home castle. This is not going to be ignored. Immediately spend all my money on home castle people, because he's probably going to attack the very next round, and I'm not going to have time. So I had two choices, right? I was right below where he just attacked. I could move up and try to take him on the home turf, but instead I chose to build up my home castle. Okay, must not have, must only had one man there. Yeah, one guy. Did I take anybody out? Nope. All right. Well, that was pathetic. Okay. So this guy, this guy's pursuing the same strategy as I am. He put all of his resources into one massive campaign that's trying to go through the whole place. So I am going to redistribute. Okay, I'm going to try to cut him off. I'm trying to cut off his uh, his supply line, I suppose. As long as he has a direct line of territories all the way to his home castle, he can go there and add more people to his campaign. Okay, now the disease. So there were 16 people before the disease, and now that I used it as early as possible, now there's only 11. If you use disease like like two rounds, two boulders left from the end or something, you you know it takes out one guy. So you should if you're if you're great at catapulting, first boulder make the hole, second disease. Otherwise, don't touch the disease. There's no point. Okay. Should be over pretty soon. And because I have knights... Because I have knights, I could have used the outflank strategy. Outflank is, if you have knights, they do more damage. Okay, well that's cool. That was an event where everybody sent, where Robin sent all the good guys 25 gold. Not that I needed it, but it was nice to have. And now that I have 113 gold, I hope... Oh wow, I'm not going to spend it. I'm surprised. Or maybe I am. See Robin. Oh yeah. Alright, so seeing Robin, this gives you more soldiers and takes out less of his. So it looks like I'm going to try to damage, I'm going to try to win the game here. But this video has 10 more minutes left, so I probably didn't take him all out here. I probably just used this to whittle him down. So that's also, oh whoa, the enemy garrison is 200 people. So the enemy is in this game is definitely playing my strategy as well. So did you see, okay, so he had 196 people and I used the disease and I got it down to 137. And then the fire got it down to 133, and I'll do it again. Yes, and I managed to get it through the hole again. And now it's down to 119. And now, I'm just going to kind of... <clears throat> I mean, the rest of this is sort of academic. I'm not actually going to try to take him out right here. That was just... This was all posturing to re remove as many of his people as possible. I'm actually going to get out of here right now. Because I can't win this. But I massively took down his army. And I can probably do it again and whittle it down even more. And then do it again and whittle it down even more until finally he's not going to have enough to defend himself. And this is me getting nervous because I know his campaign army is now floating around in that larger section of red. And he could attack my home castle at any time. So I really need to be sure that I can utterly and completely defend myself. This is actually getting quite a little silly. I know his campaign only has about 60 people in it, so I probably don't need 300, but it's funny, so why not? So this is going to take a while. So I was saying before I wrote a program that sped up the system timer, and I used it to play this game. The, the game waits like a couple of ticks before it updates the screen. So if you speed up the timer, then it, the updating of the screen is faster as well. Not by much, but a little bit. So I'd run that program to speed up the system timer, play this game, and then run it again to slow it down. Back to normal. 
Okay, I am not gonna win that, so let's get out while we still can with retreat. Okay, he attacked me, retreat, let me snap back to the home castle. This is it. This is going to be the beginning of the end here. We are going to transfer just about everything we've got into the campaign. Probably leave behind one knight and one catapult and probably, I don't know, 200 soldiers or maybe 150. And then we're going to go all the way down. So this is the beginning of the end for him. And uh, the next time we hit a major battle, I will very quickly uh, explain all of the battlefield fight options, which I keep meaning to do, but I've been... This is completely unscripted, in case you couldn't tell, but I thought it would be interesting to do this. I'm, you know, I, I know this game very well, and if anyone else got frustrated by trying to play this game, I figured that this commentary might help you understand uh, ways that you can come up with your own strategy and or beat the game. Okay, we're going to take this back, and he probably doesn't have very many people here, unless his campaign was sitting there. Uh, his campaign was sitting there, so now we have to take out his campaign of 60-odd people, plus the people he had left behind he, that he had in the castle. So, very important to hit this disease on the second throw, otherwise it doesn't take out people, it's not worth it. So we got him from 75 down to 57, and now we're just going to use the rest of this time to get the castle strength down as low as possible. Whoops, that was worthless. Yeah, if you throw a boulder, if you throw Greek fire through a hole, it takes people out. If you throw a boulder through a hole, it doesn't. It's worthless. Boulders are only for taking down the castle wall and reducing its strength. So, I am clearly going to win this. Now, note he has 19 knights, but I have so much army, it is not going to matter. So, for every six people he lose, I lose like one or two. I lost four, he lost eight. I lost two, he lost four. So, and then once the army's gone, you start wheeling down the knights, and the knights are, yeah, the knights are, this is no good. No good for him. So despite all of these wins, you'll notice my leadership is still good. I don't think Jeffrey Longstar can get any better than good for his leadership. So that kind of sucks. Okay, leave one guy behind, just in case. And here we go. We're going to try to smash him. Now, video's got five minutes left, so this is probably not the battle that directly ends it. Yeah, this is probably me whittling down the castle and his men. Rather, just as men. So he went from... Wow, that's a lot. It's amazing how much the disease takes out if you use it early on. Although it would have been nice to see it work the way I think it does in other platforms. The, the Defender of the Crown had its mechanics changed drastically sometimes between versions. The Amiga version is very hard. The DOS version is, I would consider, somewhat easy. Yeah, so I'm just going to retreat. I mean, I probably could beat him, but I think one more round... You'll notice I'm hovering on retreat, but I haven't hit enter yet. Okay, now I hit enter. I think I wanted to see if I could beat him, and it wasn't going quite the way I wanted, so I decided to retreat out of there. Now, I still have a supply line all the way back to my castle. I might be going back there for more men. Okay, no, I'm, I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy him. And since I know buying this many soldiers is gonna take a while, let's go over those battlefield options for real now. You start with stand and fight, which is normal. If you have a high leadership skill, you can choose the one above it, which is ferocious attack. I think I spoke earlier that it was outflanked. That's incorrect. Ferocious attack will do more damage if you have a high leadership skill. It will do less. Uh, it will actually hurt you if you don't. Bombard is if you have a catapult, specifically more catapults than the enemy. And if you have that, you can do bombard and you will take out more of them. Uh, in this specific battle, I'm not sure where the advantage is, so I'm just going to hold tight here and do stand and fight. 
Outflank is if you have knights. If you have a lot of knights, or again, probably more specifically, more knights than the enemy, and your leadership skill is pretty good, you can do outflank, and then the knights will actually start kicking major butt. And with all of these ferocious attack, bombard, and outflank, if you use them incorrectly, if you use them without having their prerequisites, it hurts you. So if you don't know what to do, just stand and fight. I was stating before the battle that the different versions are different. Um, they differ not just in terms of graphics, they differ quite a bit in gameplay mechanics. The game was seemingly revised every time it was ported to a system. The original Amiga version is the toughest one. It's very hard and it's very unforgiving. The DOS version lets you um, do... you can... if you buy Home Army, your, your turn is over, but you can do something in the DOS version that I don't think you can do in the original Amiga version, which is move your campaign around and transfer people and keep moving it around or whatever, and it'll all still be part of your turn. Um, and the Commodore 64 version has uh, spies, which I think is interesting. I'm, I don't recall what a spy does, but I think it's a way for you to peek at what the enemy castle has. Okay, this is it. This is the beginning of the end. I am loading everything up into my campaign, and I'm going to go straight to the castle... And even if I do poorly with the catapult, I've just completely over. I'm going to completely overwhelm him. In fact, probably to add insult to injury, there's a good chance I'm going to go see Robin beforehand, which is totally unnecessary. But what the heck? I might as well ensure complete and utter victory. This kind of massive power up front version of playing games is how I personally play all strategy games. I do not recommend it. It is very risky and uh, rarely effective. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm not very good at playing strategy games, but I am very good at playing Defender of the Crown with this specific strategy, which is why this video and this commentary exists. So here we go. I didn't even bother to see Robin. Look at that. I'm so confident that I'm going to completely destroy him. And because there's only two minutes left in the video, I know that I am going to destroy him. So first a boulder, and then disease. And then the end. I should note here when you're doing the catapult and you're doing the line, the pixel line counting thing, there's the line you're aiming for, and then if you miss it by one line, it still counts. So the actual levels of pullback are two pixels high, if that makes any sense. And if it doesn't, just try to release the catapult. Two pixels upward from where you last did it. Okay, yes, this is going to be quite silly here. And I don't know what my leadership is, but I have 15 knights to his two, so I'm going to go ahead and do outflank and try to speed this along. And boy, is he putting up a fight, because every round he's only losing one person. Yeah, that, that wasn't working. So my... Remember I told you if your leadership skill isn't good, then a lot of these things backfire? So that backfired, so I'm just going to do stand and fight and just destroy him. And there we have it. With him gone, the other territories revert to you, and the land is united. This is kind of a nice little ending screen here, with uh, Robin finding the crown and you getting it. Then we have a nice sunset picture. It's nice in the CJ version, it's even nicer here. In the Tandy version. Actually, it's not a sunset in the Tandy version. <laughs> it looks like a sunset in the CJ version. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, game on.